do you believe that the unconscious is wiser than the conscious? Or do you believe that it's the wisdom of the conscious that can reinterpret the unconscious and create new meanings? Good question and hard to answer. I think that this is more than unconscious functions. This must be spiritual. And I think that the more similar literature in psychoanalysis and psychological stories refer to the Maslow pyramid. And as you know, the final stage of the Maslow is self-actualization. And the sign of self-actualization is peak experiences. And Maslow explained that peak experiences, it is exactly what you explained to us. When someone forgets the time, the location, lost in a task. I wish I were you, Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it means that you are experiencing the self-actualization state of the Maslow theory and peak experience as Maslow explained, happen very rare for everyone, except someone who can get to the final stage. And when you self-actualize, you can use all of your own potentiality, all of your own talent, all of your intelligence in a task, in an art, and peaks experience are very valuable and important. And it belongs to most of the inventors in history. For example, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein. They forgot the time is going. They forgot the location. Oh, what time is it? Early in the morning. Uh, I'm laughing because I'm thinking it must be early in the morning in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are experienced the early morning in Iran. <laughs> Maybe we are experienced as a peak experience, <laughs> according to the Maslow theory. <laughs> Ali Reza, can I ask you one last thing? Because yes. I suddenly realized that this conversation is long. It is. And perhaps your audience is already bored. If you were going to close this meeting with one mystery that you feel psychoanalysis has not answered yet, it's an ever-evolving method, right? Of course, it's based on Freud, Lacan, but I'm sure there are incremental amplifications or ramifications of psychoanalysis, even nowadays. If you had to fuse psychoanalysis with the visual arts, maybe painting and sculpture, static arts, where many layers of time, because in film you see time moving, but in painting and sculpture you see time being added on layers. So you see the brush strokes or you see the... Um, the carving of the stone, and you know it took many months to produce that sculpture, or you can see the different layers of a painting, right? You know that the yellow is on top of the blue. So that means the blue came first and then the yellow on top. So time still exists, but in a different way. It's almost like a half time feeling. That's why I love painting and sculpture so much, because I see a suspension of time. Time stops when I look at a really amazing painting. In a film, two hours can go so quickly and you didn't notice that two hours went by. Or when you go to an opera that you really love, they're always very long operas, you know, three hours. But you didn't notice that it was three hours. But in a painting, I see the suspension of time. Almost, almost, like a symbol of immortality, almost of a symbol of not aging, almost like a defiance of time. Kronos, time, devours its own children. So we are children of time, but time also kills us, also eats us alive. 
So I think painting is an act of defiance against time because we expect 5,000 years from now, I hope some of my paintings will still be alive. <laughs> I might be dead. Ali Reza, I'm sure that you and I were going to last 5,000 years, no problem. But our legacy, whatever we leave behind, it's like an act of defiance. We want to defeat time. We want to challenge time and win. Psychoanalytically, what is, you think, your biggest mystery about the arts? For example, why did you ask me to have this conversation with you coming from a fine arts background? There must have been something in you that triggered your curiosity. And I would love to know from your perspective. Thanks. And all the difficult questions from your side. But my answer is love, Nelson. When Freud quoted, psychoanalysis is the cure of love. All of the story of the psychoanalysis is about love. What we interpret, what is transference? Transference is interpreting the emotion between psychoanalyzing clients. This is love. The cure happened through love. Your arts, your peak experience happens when you are a lover of painting, when you love your job, Nelson. The big mystery all over the world is love. You are talking with the Middle Eastern psychoanalyst. And as you know, we have a very rich, so rich literature about love. And as you know, another famous quote by Freud is that everywhere I found a put a step before me. Wow. I would love to read to you a short poem by Rumi. Oh, here it is. I found it. <laughs> it's beautiful. So Rumi wrote, When I am with you, we stay up all night. When you're not here, I cannot go to sleep. Praise God for those two insomnias and the difference between them. Very nice, Nelson. Thank you very much. It was a honor for me to have another conversation with you. Thank you for quoting Rumi because I'm a big fan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your knowledge and wisdom, Nelson. Thank you. Bye-bye <laughs> then. Bye-bye. See you bye. soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.